This what, you know, everybody clamors over. The best fighting the best. Terrence Crawford, 39-0. Me, 28-0. He has a title. I have three titles. And this is for the Undisputed. So I feel like this is a legacy fight. I'm happy that the fight is here, but I'm not satisfied until my hand is raised July 29th. I think it's gonna be a hell of a fight. I think we're gonna fight the out of each other. This is my moment to shine. I'm prepared to do whatever I have to do. This is an old school fight. This is what you know, my dad used to talk to me about when he used to watch fights 40 years ago when you had Tommy Hearns and Ray Leonard and all the greats, the four kings, and people adored them because they're really competitive fighters, blood and guts. Terrence Crawford has that dog mentality. I have that dog mentality. Then you put us together, you're gonna have an all-out war action-packed fight. Old school, just like the greats. For anyone who hasn't noticed, Super Fight season has made a triumphant return. Oh, what a shot! But this, this fight, it stands alone. Two of the greatest boxers alive facing off in their primes. Who wins? Not even Vegas can predict. All this screams vintage, classic. And to make it happen, Spence and Crawford sealed the deal with a phone call. How delightfully old school. First time we talked, we talked probably like 30 minutes, 35 minutes. And I just let them know, like, hey, what's up? Let's fight. I've been calling these guys out since 2018. Hey, look, who do you want next? Well, you already know who I want. I feel like I'm the guy that really made it happen. I want to fight Terrence Crawford. I don't want to fight anybody else. On Saturday, July 29th, two undefeated champions will zone in on legacy. This era is the Terrence Crawford era. Definitely not, man. You ain't fought nobody, man. What did I do to Sean Porter that you couldn't do? He call himself the big fish, right? But what you do when the fish get took out the water? You suffocate him. We gonna roll him up and smoke him. When Errol Spence and Terrence Crawford scrap for an undisputed welterweight crown, they'll have each other. Dance partners in lockstep. Each offering to summon magic, artistry, brilliance, unlike ever before. That's the old school part, the enticing part. Boxing at its most compelling, risk embracing rock'em sock'em best. The truth hurts! When I win this fight, it'll be no argument who's the best fighter in the world. Oh, I, I feel as if I was made for this moment. It doesn't get any bigger than this. Boxing doesn't come much better. For this clash, have the history books ready. Because if those best selves can recall past eras, then old school will, in a way, be refreshingly new. We know what's at stake. May the best man win. A showdown like this, Titan versus Titan, pretty much sells itself. Still, the camps descend on New York City to sell anyway, leaving nothing to chance. And it's obvious, they're here for a fight. I got an undisputed champ. I got an undisputed champ. Hey, keep your ass out there. Keep your ass out there. What's, what's up? up? What's up? What's going on? It's all good. It's all good. Huh? I said, what's going on? You stupid? You stupid? What? 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 What's the issue with me? I, I, I said, what's going on? I said, what's up? I said, what's up? I said, what's going on? I said, what's up? I said, what's up? All right. Yeah, I, I said, what's up? I said, what's up? All right. Yeah, I said, what's up? Yeah, I said, what's up? Ain't me. Man, this ain't about to get choked out or something. <laughs> but really, it was like his boy on the outside was talking. Damn, what's going on? Try the wrong one. I think they think I'm a punk. I just got, got a suit on. 
This is a fight that's been marinating for years. I've been preparing my whole life for this moment right here. Ain't no holding me back. Not Era, not Derek, nobody. This is gonna be a great fight. I'm putting on a great show. I'm gonna show everybody why I've been breaking people. Make sure y'all tune in July 29th. It's gonna be another man down, and it's strap season time. All right, let's please go face to face now. Like that. I'm gonna have to take that. It's work time, y'all. Y'all ready for this? Y'all got your hot sauce? Can't wait. All right, then, come prepare. Well, say you don't eat hot sauce. <laughs> you know that. Yeah. I tell you that. <laughs> hey, can I ask how the hell he knew I didn't eat hot sauce? Arrow. Julie? I, do, I didn't know you didn't eat hot sauce, so that's not me. He said, you don't even eat hot sauce. I said, <laughs> 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 how the you know that? Good inside information. That's yeah. something like Bowman. I didn't know you don't eat the hot sauce. Ish? Just Ish. like the old ish, want to blame everything on both. <laughs> yeah, exactly. exactly. <laughs> oh, it feels good in here. Hey, long time no see. Yes, sir. Welcome. Yes, sir. Thank Good you. Thank you. Man. Doing all right? Yes, sir. Jersey. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Want a jersey? Oh, yeah. Where am I lining up at? I come out here a little bit, put them corner safety. Corner? Right. The rules we got to work in right now, I can definitely not put you out here. We'll get fined and lose three draft picks. Sweet, I don't even know. I ain't even tripping, man. They work in. You up. You up. Just taking it slow now. If we had a game, I could go. Yeah, baby. You the man now. Errol Spence Jr.'s favorite football team long ago elevated a simple star into a symbol of success. But when Spence and his longtime trainer Derek James pop by for a visit, it's clear which star is most in demand. Even NFL icons see Spence and are starstruck. Wait a minute, man. You coming out? Of course. Of oh, course. Yeah. I ain't got so. no other man. Look, good luck, bro. Appreciate it, man. I appreciate it. it. You know yeah, yeah, I already know. Keep going. Uh, we watch you know it, bro. Sure. bro. I mean, I've been a Dallas Cowboy fan my whole life. It's kind of crazy and surreal just dapping up all the players and, you know, talking with them and having a conversation with them. No, we've been yes, talking about like that. Oh, yeah, I already know. It's go time now. Oh, yeah. Getting that type of respect from biggest franchise in the world just means a lot. Yeah, OK. I'm expecting a lot of Cowboys to come out and uh, so I can put on a great show. And, like, I win a Super Bowl for them on the 29th, and they win a Super Bowl for me later on in the year. The fandom, apparently, is mutual as star pass rusher Micah Parsons plots a transition from fight fan to fighter. Anyone down for a sports swap? I'm in championship fight weight oh, right now. What if I break your nose? Three rounds, that's all I got. He said three rounds. Man, if I last three, rounds. three rounds in off season. Gary Jones calling my people talking about what I did to you. <laughs> my friend, my friend. Go all right, sir. Good to have you out here. Yes, sir, yes, sir. I'm glad to be out here. I have such an appreciation for what Hurley is as a athlete. When I think of the Dallas Cowboys, I think he rises to that level of uh, excellence in sports. What it takes to go out there, just you in the ring with one other and push through. Yes, sir. These guys have to learn how hard it is to push through to have success. When I was growing up, I wanted to be a football player, so my dream was to play for the Dallas Cowboys. Well, it's a big one coming up for you. It's the last belt to get at, at the weight class that I'm at, and I can move up, so I'm ready. As Spence's Cowboys know well, building a meaningful legacy takes time. His quest to unify the storied welterweight division started way back in 2017 on another champion's hostile home turf. The best fighting the best. Kel Brook and Errol Spence putting it all on the line here. Ah, uh, he's taking a knee. And the fight is over. Errol Spence Jr. has done it. The truth hurts as Errol Spence Jr. becomes IBF welterweight champion. The goal is to unify the titles, become the undisputed welterweight champion of the world. Consider Spence a belt collector of sorts. The pattern. Find one, fight for it. Drape that bad boy over an arm. 
Spence aimed for Kel Brook initially, then Sean Porter, then Jordani Zugas. And in five years, he arrived at the welterweight summit, only one belt away. Errol Spence Jr. is one of the best boxers on planet Earth. What's next? Everybody know who I want next. I want Terrence Crawford next. Man down, straight up easy. I know what time it is, baby. Terrence, I'm coming for that belt. My motto is strap season man down. So as you see the shirt, that's the last door. We didn't got the Kale, Sean, Ugas, and now we at Crawford door. So July 29th, try to walk through some more doors. <laughs> It's rare for a champion to become undisputed. Rare still to need five years for three belts. But Spence is not normal. And those years for him were about survival. Whether a life-threatening car wreck or a career-threatening eye injury, that he still fought, still won, still marched towards undisputed, showcased the medal within. Everything that I, you know, been through, especially in the last few years, they can make a movie out of my career. You know, different trials and tribulations that, you know, I've been through. He said that I'll get all these belts over here, regardless of car accident, regardless of attached retina. He was able to unify the champ, have three belts, and all he needs is one more. Terrence Crawford is the only fight that I want. I couldn't think of a better scenario. He's a great fighter, I'm a great fighter. This fight, you know, is happening now. I think it's happening at a great time. Terrence is my dancing partner. You know, I feel like we're gonna make each other great. Top to bottom. It's gonna come down to fortitude. He faced a lot of things that shows that he has the mental fortitude, that mental toughness. And I think that that's gonna play a big role and Errol becoming an undisputed champ of the world. Omaha Yano make some noise for Bud Crawford. I'd like to thank everybody that took the time out to come to this event, not only myself, but for the community and the kids. I appreciate each and every one of you. Y'all know what I'm gonna do. Y'all already know what I'm gonna do. It ain't nothing new but the day. Normally, I do a send off with like immediate family, but this time we was just like, let's get the community in, into it and let's have a community event. I'm a firm believer of, you gotta give back to the community that raised me to be the man that I am today. In Terrence Crawford's hometown of Omaha, instead of the star in Dallas, there's only one star, him. Hence the send-off rally. One last hurrah with supporters before departing for camp in Colorado Springs. And where better to host than Omaha's boxing epicenter, the Academy Crawford opened as his career boomed. We started BNB Boxing Academy because it's a lot of crime in North Omaha. And I was one of those kids that didn't have anything to do. It's probably two options, jail or dead. What, is you ready? Is you ready? What drew me to boxing was, I was in a neighborhood fighting. What's his name? Canelo. Canelo? <laughs> Canelo. Say <Sick>, boy. <laughs> my mom told me to go to college and try to do something else with my life because I wasn't gonna be. My dad, he always told me I was gonna be a million dollar baby. As Crawford made the impossible routine, he proved mom wrong and dad right. But don't mistake that for smooth. The streets nearly swallowed young Bud, who was shot and survived and saved by the sport that now defines him. Make some noise for Terrence Bud Crawford, Omaha's finest! We have a fist line. No disrespect. We could demolish it. But we fry and fish. Yeah, I mean. He's supposed to be here, but he's not here. <laughs> I knew for a fact I should have been in the bed sleeping until they called me. I swear. 
Stay in the bed, Bernard. Don't rush. Stay in the bed. You know how it is. I know. They got the Good morning. I knew it wasn't going to be 530. I almost got an extra 30 minutes of sleep. In order to not just box, but conquer, Crawford built an unbreakable team. And today, Bernard Davis, Red Spikes, Esau Diegas, and head trainer Brian Bomack McIntyre are headed to the mountains to prep for the precipitous climb ahead. Those individuals know the real Terrence Crawford, not just boxing Terrence Crawford. They family. Hi, guys. <laughs> Them the type of people that want the best for you. Bring it in, bring it in, y'all. Come on. We got time, we got to go. When something like this happens, it's like they accomplishing it as well. Amen. 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 Hey, man. Here he is. Now we gonna box him. There you go. Look him now. Uh, Got you here. Uh, oh, uh, stab. Uh, Double hook. Uh, uh, Give me a triple. Uh, uh, look right. Uh, uh, right in the hook. Uh, uh, there you go. Listen, listen. Uh, Our whole thing today is to, is to try to break him. I want them to say I quit, especially you. I bet you I say I make you say I quit. I bet you I hit you in your fucking mouth. You bet you. What? I bet you I hit you in your mouth. I bet you don't. <laughs> bet. Let's bet. Stop playing before you get hurt. That's all. Come on. Work time. We've been coming out here just to get away, getting away from all the distractions at home. My mind is shifting from pre-camp and working out to actually the object at hand. That's the reason why we come out here. You can get a clear view of what's ahead of you. Make no mistake, this bud is a badass. He can switch stances, moves like a dancer, and those shots, they thump. After turning pro in 2008, Crawford fought 39 times, recording 30 knockouts, and becoming the undisputed super lightweight champion boxing's first four belt holder in more than 12 years. Spence been on my mind ever since I moved up into the division. The fans and the media wasn't calling for Sean Porter to fight Terrence Crawford when Sean Porter had a title. The fans wasn't calling for Ugas to fight Terrence Crawford when he had a title. They was saying, oh, fight Errol. You know it, you gotta, you gotta keep going. I train my ass off to be where I'm at. I deserve those fights. Fighter of the year, huh? Read magazine champ, two times. It was frustrating, but I had to take what I had to get. Ah, boxing. A sport where clamor doesn't always equal fights made. But while Crawford eyed the big fish, he took the fights available to him, becoming a three-division world champion and bludgeoning many a foe. After we moved to 147 pounds, to be honest with you, man, we've been licking our chops from day one. Them guys was just getting us more prepared to step in the ring July 29th, because this is a fight that we always wanted. Double that sucker up! Ah. Oh. Oh. There we go! Ah. Coming to this fight is like graduating from college. It's like walking across the stage and gra grabbing that diploma. Come on, man, stop playing, dog. Did you say I wasn't gonna hit you in your mouth? I said it was just a... Uh, I said it was a bet. He bites me, wrestle around. I'm 53 years old, I got time for that. You put my two weeks in. Errol could have easily moved up to 154 and said, man, I'm not fighting that dude. I commend him for staying at 147 and doing what he said he was going to do, and that's fight Terrence Crawford. And I respect him for that. We work backwards from his training, so his output has to match his input, especially if we've got weight to lose. He's about to go to the gym shortly after this, so uh, this is just fuel for, for that workout. The nutritionist who crafts his meal plan agrees with Spence's commendable quest. His stomach, though, might like a word. 
In order to remain at welterweight, the big fish must stay as lean as possible, outsourcing the scales to focus on the stakes. He made a promise that he was going to get all those belts at 147, but as you get older, it's not easy to keep making that weight. What I used to do would be a peanut butter and jelly sandwich, and then I'd put eggs inside the peanut butter and jelly sandwich. Before I met him two years ago, he'd never had a camp house. He'd done everything from home, everything by himself killing himself to make 147. Play just gets smaller, <laughs> smaller, and, and less stuff on it. It's absolutely essential for him to do it the right way. The worst thing right now is to be to starve him for the biggest night of his life. It's a huge weight off my shoulders, you know, not worrying about, oh, what I'm gonna eat for breakfast, what I'm gonna eat for lunch, what I'm gonna eat for dinner, and just having somebody else do that. I put hot sauce and everything. I remember last camp, I made this bolognese. It took me like five, six hours. I was cooking it down all day. And he picked up Asian hot sauce and went <laughs> <"Fsh."> <laughs> I'm like, mm. <laughs> The heat, as they say, is on. Which is why, after fueling, Spence swaggers into the gym to ramp up for the most important camp of his life. Yo, hold up, wait then, hop in, patient. I feel like Terrence Crawford, he's a guy that's gonna go for the kill, especially if he if he smells blood. But once the lights turn on and the bell rings, you know, it's basically, it's war time. I feel like that's a legacy defining fight. Just watch me, just watch me like, we coming in hot, we coming in hot. For a boxing champion, it never hurts to have a takedown specialist in your corner. For today's sparring session, that's Micah Parsons, Cowboys all-pro edge rusher. A man who admires Spence because he hits like him. Short shot, short shot. It's just a different game. No one can save you out there. You're on your own. If I miss a tackle, I got someone to get my back. You know, if I drop the ball, someone can pick me up. You know, if Earl drops the ball, that's over. It's over. Put in the time, been on the grind. While his opponent seeks an edge high above sea level, Spence hunts for his in the searing Texas heat. He knows in the pick'em blockbuster ahead, the smallest of margins could tip the outcome. We coming in hot. We coming in hot. It's just a tough, gritty gym. It's old school. If you can get through being in a hundred something degree gym, sparring and training, once you get in front of those bright lights, it's pretty easy for me. Jump, 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 jump. His condition, he doesn't stop. We spar like 12 or 13 rounds a day. He's a worker. He understands like what it's gonna take to be successful. That's why he's the best coach in Boston, because he don't try to pamper me. When I look like, he gonna say I look like, I don't care how big you get, ain't nobody get pampered and you gonna critique me like I'm a grown man. Appreciate you, man. Down, 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 real, down, real. Down, down, down. You know what I'm saying? That's what that's we like, do. That's how my best coach has been. Social media people tell you how great you are. You ain't got nobody telling you, hey, tighten up. That's how you fall off. That's how you get up there and, and drop down. Heavenly Father, we're just so truly grateful for you for the moments that we get to gather together as family. Bless this food, bless all the hands that prepared it. Amen. Amen. All right, all the kids, come on. Where you at? On Father's Day, Spence shifts to the title he's most proud of, Family Man. Thus the celebration, relatives, a feast, and Errol Spence Jr. and Sr. admiring the life they've built. While pushing towards an epic celebration, they've pegged for late July. What's that, red snapper? We're father and son, but now we're kind of like brother and brother. You gotta give me the fish head. You want the head, I don't want the head. <laughs> <laughs> I'm the, the whole head. The brain, the eyes. I like it in soup. I think our bond is inseparable. I feel like our relationship is, you know, right on point. I feel like it's super solid, uh, super genuine. For a brood that's authentic, true to its close-knit core, no less than handmade gifts will do. So Spence's daughters, Violet and Ivy, prove nature and nurture, presenting their creations and highlighting a super fight subplot. Two boxers who value family above all. 
And he is dirty. Why did he put my egg? <laughs> <laughs> Out here, the altitude is great. It ain't nothing to do but train, really. Made it, Ma. Top of the world. It's definitely different than being at home. Being away from my family is definitely frustrating, you know, but that's part of my job. July 29th, it's a celebration, it's a coronation. They gotta eat, and you gotta feed them. So this is what you're doing it for. What's up, son? Every camp, my kids come out for at least a week. It's just so comfortable having them there. It's motivating. That's right, champions do. Like father, like son. No days off. We working on Father's Day. Got my son with me. I'm gonna enjoy this day. It's a beautiful day today. Why not work out? Why not work out? Father's Day to all my fathers out there, man. Throw it. To be away from them and then to see their face and to have them Yo. yelling, fighting, arguing, and being in daddy mode. This is what I do it for. When you look at me and Earl, me and him do this for the fans and as well as for both of our families. July 29th, you're going to see a new undisputed welterweight champion of the world, and he's gonna be from Omaha, Nebraska. For years, two dancers pursued ideal partners while surviving tragedy and turmoil. Each came to believe with unflinching certitude that to ascend even higher, they simply needed the right opponent. Terrence Crawford, he's a mean fighter. He's a guy that if he gets you hurt, he's gonna go for the knockout. When I met with Force, I'm gonna give you Force right back. That's, you know, a match made in heaven. I'm the same way. It's gonna come down to determination and willpower and see who breaks first. For Errol Spence Jr. and Terrence Crawford, the final steps in their dance with destiny won't be taken until they stand together, guards up, fists flying. Anything that I do, I want to win. I got all the tools to beat him. These champions, having circled for years, were defined by obstacles surmounted. Now, though, it's forward, onward, upward, for those who stuck with them, for legacy, for boxing amid a remarkable era. For both, Saturday, July 29th marks a pivot point. Soon they'll don dancing shoes and move, dance, tango, boogie. The question is, in which direction? We finally got a future undisputed champion of the world, July 29th, myself. <laughs> On Saturday, July 29th, Errol Spence Jr. will fight Terrence Crawford for the undisputed welterweight title. This show has a rap. Yeah, yeah, oh, uh, yeah. The live is a time and we hit it out. The live is around and we shut it down. If you got a wager, then bet it now. We walk in the building like, what's up now? I want all the smoke, you can let it out. I need all the haters to say it loud. Ain't no competition, they hoping and wishing I get in my feelings, not check me out. We marching like soldiers, might as get heavy, the part of the corner. Slapping you dead, cause we getting closer. They pull a straight, so we took it over. Yeah, yeah. Know how this party go, yeah. gotta run it around like it's cardio. We the 